Hi, we're going to talk about Le Chatelet's principle, specifically if we stress a system by changing the concentration. So I have a key over here. Now, I don't want you to memorize this, okay? You can easily figure this out, uh, but I do want to give you this key. For example, if you increase the concentration of the reactants, the reaction is going to shift in the forward direction, it's going to go toward the products. So here's the key, the four things of how we can change uh, concentrations, adding, taking away reactants, adding, taking away products. Um, what I'd like you to do is to think about a teeter-totter. So I have a little picture right here of a teeter-totter. Um, I remember playing on one of these when I was little, usually with my brother, he's a year younger than me. And you know what little brothers do, we would get perfect, just even. We'd have the exact, um, force on each side. You know, one of us would scoot up, one of us would scoot back so that we were perfect. Our little feet would dangle um, and then he would jump off and run away and laugh <laughs> and I'd go boom and hit the bottom. I'm sure I did it to him too. Um, but this is what I want you to think about. At equilibrium, that is when we have that beautiful, beautiful equal rates. And I want you to think about that teeter-totter that um, is completely level, okay? So that's the visual that we're going to use on this. Um, and <laughs> if you're interested, you saw the website, <laughs> if you want a teeter-totter. Okay, uh, so I have our just very generic equation right here, that little a plus big B is in equilibrium with little c plus, b, um, or little c, big C plus little b, big D. Okay, now we're going to say that this is a perfect equilibrium, and we're going to do this a lot with my arm. I'm at this pu uh, perfect level. We are going to add some of A. So let's add A. Now literally think about the child jumping on the teeter-totter. Think about the masses. If I'm at perfect equilibrium and I add A, what happens to that teeter-totter? Well the child runs, jumps on, goes like this. It's heavy on this side. There's too much reactant. Now everything remember in nature will go to equilibrium. That's what Le Chatelier's principle tells us, that when a system is stressed, oh I added more A, it will always go back to equilibrium. So we can predict which way it will shift is the word that we use. Um, which way um, this reaction will react, compensate to go back into equilibrium. Well, if I have too much reactant, I need to consume some of it and I need to make more product. So if I add A, it's going to go in the forward direction. It's going to, um, so I put the arrow here, it's going to go shift in the forward direction. Another way that you could say this is that it's going to shift to products. Um, or if you want to really write it out, you could say it's going to consume reactants, produce products. Much, much easier just to say shift forward, shift to the, the products. Um, now, I want you, in, in figuring this out, the very, very basis, I want you to recall this. Our equilibrium expression, so the constant K, um, that's products over reactants. So if I add reactant, if I add a, you just got a big denominator. Okay, now really important, there are three stresses. There's concentration, pressure, and temperature. If you change concentration and pressure, guess what? That value of K does not change, it maintains. So if I add more reactants, it no longer has the same ratio. So it will shift to maintain that ratio. It's going to consume the reactants, make more products to bring it back into that value, that ratio that is K. Now temperature, temperature does change the value of K. Uh, but you can think about this mathematically too, of oh, I added A, too, too big of a de denominator, is going to have to consume reactants and then produce the products. So at the theory, the mathematical, that's what's happening. I just happen to like my teeter-totter example. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, let's say that we are going to remove some of B. So we're at perfect equilibrium. So the rate that we go forward is the same rate that we go back, and we're at equilibrium, the concentrations are constant. So we jump in and we pull out some of B, okay? So I pull out some of B. Think about children, again, on a teeter-totter. If we remove B, this side gets lighter and it goes like that. That's like my brother jumping off the teeter-totter, okay? So um, this side is heavier because we removed B, this side's lighter. You say, which way is it going to shift to go back into equilibrium? Well, we're going to have to push it this way. It's going to have to go in the reverse direction. 
So this is going to shift, reverse. Another way that you could say that is it's going to shift to reactant. Now, attaching this mathematically, come back to our equilibrium expression of products over reactants. We have to maintain that ratio. Well, if I take out some of R, some of that reactant, the number is going to be too small on the denominator. We're going to have to consume some of that product and we have to add some reactant to bring it back into the value that's the ratio at equilibrium, equal rates. Um, so mathematically, that's what's going on. Let's do two more. Um, let's see, this time I, instead of using our generic formula, let's go ahead and, um, and use a, uh, a real formula. Let's use the Haber process. We are going to take one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen gas, and that will be in equilibrium with two moles of ammonia. Okay, so this time I am going to harvest, I'm going to remove some of that ammonia. So we're at beautiful equilibrium, um, and we were going to remove some of the NH3. And remember, that's the product. We're going to remove some of that product. And that's totally what we would do. The point of the Haber process is to um, form the ammonia so that we can sell it. So I'm at beautiful equilibrium. We jump in, we remove some of that NH3, okay? We harvest that and we sell it. So I take some of the NH3 out, and what happens? This gets really light, so it's going to look like this. Um, it's going to be high, that's going to be too light. Um, so which way is it going to shift? It's going to have to shift in the forward direction to bring it back into equilibrium. I've got too many reactants. Since I pulled out some of that ammonia, too many reactants, we're going to have to shift forward. Um, so this is going to shift forward. Now check this out. It's a trick. If I want to harvest more ammonia, man, let's just pull that ammonia out. And what does it do? It's going to consume reactants, make more products. Yes, that was, that's what we want. Let's make more products so that we can sell more. Um, so this is one way that we can maximize our product. Okay, so now one more. Let's um, add some ammonia. We're going to add the product. Hi ladies, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Do you know what? I'll have you go um, in the neighboring classroom if that's okay for a little bit and you guys can tutor. Okay, thank you so much. So now we're going to remove the product. Um, so let's go back to, I'm at perfect equilibrium. We're going to, um, oh, excuse me. We're going to add the product. Let's add some of the NH3. So if I add NH3, it's going to get really heavy right here, okay? So we are going to get too much of the NH3. Um, and it's got to go back into equilibrium. So if I have too much, we need to consume some of that, make more of the reactant. We're going to shift in the reverse direction. Direction. So shift, reverse, shift, reverse. Um, so you're going to be thinking, honestly, even with your pencil, the teeter-totter. And if you remove something, it gets light on that side, okay? If you add something, it gets heavy on that side. And you're, whichever side is higher, that's the way it's going to shift to bring it back into equilibrium. Um, at the very root, it goes back to the ratio. You've got to maintain that ratio. If you add more or less of either of those, um, you're, you're thinking, okay, what needs to happen to those numbers to bring it back into that perfect ratio uh, where we have the constant concentrations, which indicates equal rates, equal rates. So change of concentration. Thank you. Have a good day.